Is it time for the Ravens to finally sign a pass rusher? Which undrafted rookie free agents do you think will make the Ravens roster? Did the Ravens use Devin DuVernay like the Panthers did Curtis Samuel? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. And you know just what I mean. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers, which is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team. And we answered in a video just like this. If you want to be part of NFL question from subscribers, you can just send me an email to team, keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, shout out to all the team, keep it clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all and team, keep it clean. Let's keep this thing moving. Uh, this episode is just going to be me, so it, it does sometimes kind of feel weird when I do questions from subscribers and it's just me now, because uh, we enjoy having the guests on a lot. Shout out to everybody uh, that's been on already as a guest for question from subscribers, and there will be more to come, and there will be some repeat offenders, uh, so some people are going to come back too, uh, but I, I enjoy it, man. I enjoy it, and I just, I, I love it, so I love y'all. We got some fire questions as we always do. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Rainmaker. He said, hey, Raven, hope all is well in the land of the Florida Ravens. <laughs> hey, I, I'm with it, man. Anyway, he said, I got a question for you. Do you think it's time to make a move for a veteran pass rusher? Ryan Kerrigan just signed with Philadelphia. One pass rusher off the board. Now, I hope we make a move for either Houston or Ingram. We need a veteran pass rusher who opposing offenses have to account for and also give our new players time to develop. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on the matter. Oh, and like Ryan Kerrigan is with the Washington football team, I'm out. <laughs> hey, um, is it time? I think so. But what the Ravens are doing, I think the Ravens are just waiting. And they're waiting. And they're waiting and waiting and waiting. Because every day that them pass rushers continue to be out there, Bryce keeps on dropping. And you know the Ravens love them cheap deals. Ravens, they don't shop at Target. Ravens shop at places like Big Lots, Walmart. And, I mean, I, I shop at those places, too. But Ravens, when it comes to spending that money, they try to find the best bang for their buck. And they look for the cheapest possible deal, um, especially when it comes to free agents. So, with Melvin Ingram, he visited the Dolphins yesterday. Well, I'm recording this video on uh, Tuesday, May 25th. Uh, Melvin Ingram visited the Dolphins yesterday. Of course, like you mentioned, Ryan Kerrigan, he is off the board now. He's gone. Um, so that leaves uh, Justin Houston, Melvin Ingram, um, Olivier Vernon. Uh, so you still got a couple of options. So even if Melvin Ingram ends up signing with the Miami Dolphins, uh, you still have uh, some options out there. And again, so far it's worked out with the whole Justin Houston thing, because y'all remember, and I and I am not afraid ad, afraid to admit it, and I still go by it. Uh, but if I felt like the Ravens should have been signed Justin Houston, so I feel like there was a chance that somebody else could pick him up. And if there's a player right there, and it's a good player, and you know that player can make your team better, you grab him. You don't worry about them comp picks. But Ravens say, no, 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 we straight, we're gonna wait. And they waited, and he still hasn't been signed yet. What the holdup is, I ain't got no clue. Uh, but I do think it's time uh, that the Ravens sign a pass rusher because right now, I know you ain't just going to rely on the rookies and what we got uh, because the rookies, are, of course, Dalen Hayes and uh, Adafe away. I mean, that would be something there. And, and, of course, there's Tyus Bowser, there's Pernell McPhee, um, there's Jalen Ferguson. That would be something if they roll with that. Like, the, they would turn from the Baltimore Ravens, to the, from the Florida Ravens to the Risky Ravens. And if they just roll with the young boys, that, that would be something right there now. Uh, and speaking of young boys, uh, my guy Rainmaker said, I was just watching the new guys get their official jerseys. Away is wearing number 99. Maybe if he gets on the road this year, his nickname could be 99 Problems or The Problem. Maybe it will stick. Let's just hope he plays well. I can see the Ravens playing that Jay-Z song when he gets to set. We'll probably have to do a Team Keep It Clean version, though. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that thing is edited, man. Uh, but, yeah, man, I, I do, to sum it up, I, I do think that it is time. Uh, but the Ravens have shown that they can actually still take their time and they still got options out there. Next question came from my boy Gareth. He said, hey, Graven, what undrafted rookie free agents do you think will make the 53-man roster? Thanks for everything that you have done. Really appreciate you. And that's my question. Hashtag team keep it clean. Shout out to my guy Gareth, man. Um, I, I really do. The biggest one that I think has an opportunity 
uh, would be Ardarius Washington because the safety position, nothing is set in stone except for the starters. That's literally the, the only ones who are safe, so to speak. Uh, Deshaun Elliott and Chuck Clark, that's it. Beyond that, literally nobody is safe. Not Anthony Levine, not Jordan Richards, not Geno Stone. Nobody is safe. So Ardarius Washington being a safety, being a young safety, and then being a cheap safety, he has a big opportunity here. If he turns enough heads in practice and turns enough heads in training camp, he could end up making the roster. He really could. And he would cost less than all of They signed Geno Stone to a one-year deal. <coughs> Excuse me. They signed Anthony Levine to a one-year deal. They signed Jordan Richards to a one-year deal. What do one-year deals mean? It means you're expendable. It means that you, you're not a long-term investment. It means that the Ravens or any team that signs you to a one-year deal, they could move on any time that they want to, and there would be minimal financial harm. So I think it would be Ardarius Washington. Next question came from my boy General Bomb 16 and Shout out to him because I always see him in the comment sections. I appreciate you, man. He said, Angraven, Graven, it's been a while since I submitted a question. Just didn't have much to say, but I might do another 53-man roster prediction this year. All right. He said, hope you and the family are doing well. Now on to my topic for today, trading with the Falcons. Oh, yes, this is a good one. He said, now, this is kind of a bait, but it's not really Julio related. Oh, it's about Hayden Hurst. Oh, okay, you got me. You, you really got me because I was thinking, okay, let's keep going. He said, would, would a proposed trade such as a third or fourth rounder plus Boykin in exchange for Hurst back be an interesting plan? Uh, one, thing is, one thing is that this could all be packaged along with a Julio deal where we get Julio and Hurst for Boykin, a first, and some picks. But staying on just Boykin and Hurst for now. The Falcons would probably like to keep Hurst as part of their two tight end sets. But with only one year left on Hurst's deal, and after losing a second round pick to us, the Falcons may want some compensation back in the form of a third or, or a fourth rounder. The addition or the added addition of Voykin gives them a two year player on a rookie contract that is pretty raw, but we Ravens fans have seen the flashes and the change of scenery may help him with the higher volume of targets that he hasn't gotten in Baltimore. That's a good point too. Uh because yeah, with Boykin that we know he can we know he can do some stuff. We we know he we know that he is capable of a lot, but with the Ravens, it's a far and few opportunity with Boykin, so it's it's hard for him to sort of get into a rhythm and hit that stride. Uh, but anyway, he said uh, there's also the added benefit in the fact that there's a high chance we don't keep seven wide receivers. Then they're, they're not they they ain't keep. There's no way they keeping those seven wide receivers. Um, between Prochet and Boykin, Boykin right now is just the number one blocking wide receiver and number five outside threat. Prochet, I would say, is decent and can be better at both slot and outside and is also a very good second returner for the team with trust already in the coaching staff. So instead of cutting Boykin or Prochet and losing them to waivers when we want them on a practice squad, I think that's how it works. Yeah, that is. They will release the player and hope that nobody picks them up, like you said, on waivers, and then they can sign them back to the practice squad. So you're right about that. Uh, so instead of doing that... Uh, they keep Prochet and get a player back in return for Boykin and a pick for a very good player in Hurst to reunite with the three-headed monster at tight end. The Falcons, after losing Julio, can get back a pick for Hurst and get back Boykin, who has a, the body frame to where he can possibly develop into a solid number two and number three wide receiver that can be utilized in Arthur Smith's scheme to block as a big body wide receiver. Woo! This was something right here. Um, I don't see it happening, though. I don't see it happening uh, because Hurst, Hurst, I mean, the Falcons, they obviously got Hurst's contract. They got his rights or whatever, um, but Hurst wouldn't want to come back here. And I don't see the Ravens, for somebody that they gave up to acquire picks, I don't see them giving picks up to acquire that person back. Ravens usually, they don't usually do too many reunions. Especially trade, like, okay, we traded you away, let's trade back for you. They don't normally do that. Now, having Hayden Hurst here would be great. It would be great. But I, I think right now it's just, it's just going to be a dream, and it's going to remain that way. Now, if the Ravens traded uh, with somebody else from the Falcons, <laughs> no, I wouldn't mind that. And it's crazy because before, if y'all remember, months ago, months before free agency started, well, not months because the season ended in like February, but before free agency started, when there were initially rumors about Julio Jones being on the outs in Atlanta, 
we did a question from subscriber video and i was just like no mm -mm. i just nope and but that was when i thought it may be uh worth a first round pick to acquire julio because i was like no nah, I, I don't i wouldn't give up a first rounder for julio i wouldn't and even for a second round i was like ah maybe but then for a third i was like oh, okay that, that wouldn't be so bad it might be a second but third third and lower that that would be much better um because julio is, is older you've been banged up a lot uh but now my tune on that head well my tune hasn't changed because i don't even think anybody's gonna give up a first rounder for julio and of course the story came out that the Falcons wanted a first rounder for Julio, but nobody bid on that. And now it's out there that the Falcons, they want a second rounder. But you know what that means. When it's publicly out there that the team wants a certain draft pick, that means they're trying. They're trying for that, that pick, but they know that most likely nobody's going to give that up. So now hey, I'm with them getting Julio all day because you wouldn't have to give up a first rounder. You wouldn't have to give up a second rounder. It starts at, a, at the third. It starts in the third. So, <laughs> Julio is there for the taking now, man. And, again, what, what he would do for this team, <laughs> man. Oh, boy. He would take us, like, we improved. Our wide receiver group improved. Uh, but he would give us that known factor that, like, you know Julio. You, like, you know. You know what he can do. There's some guys that we wonder what they can do. We think about what they can do, and we hope that they can do but with julio you know all right next questions came from my boy chris and my guy lance so first chris said what's up in graven hope all is well with you and the fam i just saw on espn that the cardinals are considering reconstructing deandre hopkins contract in order to make a push for julio jones i, I don't think that was it i think deandre hopkins just put it out there on twitter on social media and stuff that he would be willing to do that i don't think the the cardinals said they were but you never know at the same time. But anyway, he said, my question is, do you think that the Ravens should make the same push for Julio, even though we already have weapons and maybe give up, say, a first round pick and maybe send in Miles Boykin? Just a thought. I was wondering what you might be thinking. Take care. Uh, with that, oof, um, a first rounder, no. I don't think a first rounder would even be necessary. Uh, a second rounder, though, I think a second rounder could definitely get it done because a second rounder would be something more than what they would be expecting to get for Julio Jones. Um, and then he said Miles Boykin as well. Ooh, man. So why does everybody want to get rid of Miles Boykin? Um, our wide receiver room would be crowded, no doubt. Uh, and again, whoever that whoever would be the odd man out, like it's already gonna be like some odd men out right now, uh, because the room is a little bit crowded. Uh, but you add in a Julio Jones, then it's definitely gonna be some odd men out and even more. Uh, so who that would be, I I'm not even sure. But uh Lance, Lance's question. Uh he, he said uh, is it possible that the Ravens trade Trace McSorley in a package for Julio Jones? Uh, I think this would be a good move, a good trade, because Trace, when he came to the Ravens, I think he went 3 or 4 no in the preseason. He has the potential. He just needs a team, and I think it's time for the Ravens to go, I mean, for the Falcons to go into rebuild mode. And Ravens can trade some of those receivers if they get Julio. Trey, Trey, it's no offense to Trace at all, but I, I don't think Trace has any value uh, to a Julio Jones trade. Um... I mean, yeah, he could be a nice backup quarterback for Matt Ryan. Who knows how long Matt Ryan has left uh, as a Falcon and just in, as a starting quarterback. I mean, he obviously got some juice left in him. But um, I don't think Trace really moves the needle when it comes to a, a, a Julio Jones trade. Um, so, I, I mean, they could. They could add him in a package. But I don't think that would really be the deal breaker or the deal maker uh, for the Atlanta Falcons. Next question came from my boy Bullet Atrex. He said, Ain't Graven, love the videos. I wanted to ask, do you think it'll be a good idea if the Ravens use Devin Duvernay like Carolina did with Curtis Samuel? I mean, <laughs> well, let me let me finish the question first. Uh, would you rather have De Duvernay be used like Samuel or be just a strict wide receiver? And which one do you think would be the best for the Ravens? Love the viz and keep up the great work. Appreciate it, man. Uh, and he's also somebody else that I always see in the comment section. So I appreciate it a lot. I feel like they already do. I feel like they actually use him more as a running back than a wide receiver. Because, again, you know, Devin Duvernay, we haven't mentioned in a long time, but he was the jet sweep king. He was a jet sweep king. That's what they use him for. Jet sweep, jet sweep, jet sweep, jet sweep. That's, that's it. And, of course, the kick returns and punt returns, too. Um, but I, I would just like to continue to see him use, but I would like to see him be using the passing game, too, not just on the, not just on the jet sweeps. You can incorporate this guy in so many different ways. Uh, he's low to the ground. I think he's like 5'10", but he's built for it, and he got some nice speed. 
Uh, so you could throw him some screen passes. It'd be nice if Ravens implemented the screen game into their offense. That'd be a beautiful thing. Um, continue your jet sweeps, but it doesn't. Ha you don't have to like. I hate when we when, when we see Devin Duvernay on the field. When we saw number thirteen, and we saw him go in motion, we we just knew what was coming. We knew what was coming, and it'd be like. And sometimes it worked now, but still, it's like, come on, let's let's do some more with this guy. Um, but. So I just I just want to see him be used, period, period. And I know it's going to be a lot of people ahead of him uh, this year, but I just I, I just really want to see him used, period, and not just on the jet sweeps. Next question came from my boy Gregory E. He said, good afternoon. How would you feel if the Ravens offered Richard Sherman a contract to play free safety? It's obvious he lost a step to play cornerback, but the man has extreme football intelligence and he has a great nose for the football. He is more than capable to wear the green dot, and I believe he would add leadership to that defense. Go Ravens. Um, if they did that, I wouldn't be mad, but <laughs> Richard Sherman, he, he wasn't his saying, are you mad? Is you mad? Are you big mad? Whatever he said to Tom Brady that time. But I think I would have to ask him the same thing. Are you mad? Is you big mad to be a backup? Because that's what he would be. Now, the Ravens, they definitely have packages where they have three safeties on the field all at once. And they move their safeties around a lot. So he would definitely get his playing time. But would he be willing to be the backup? I mean, at this point, uh, with training camp coming up right around the corner, uh, it may be the only way. It really might be. Um, but, yeah, he certainly would add some leadership, a veteran presence, and just a football, football smarts. Football smarts. Um, so I wouldn't be mad at it. I, I definitely wouldn't be mad at it. Um, and, and he could, of course, help the young guys as well. But even just because I, I know a lot of, a lot of veterans, they, like, that's not their job, though, man. Veterans' job ain't just to help the young guys. They want to play. They want to play. So I know a lot of us can get caught up. And, and and automatically when we think about a veteran player coming on the team, oh yeah, he helped the young guys. He could teach this guy that, teach that. No, they they still trying to cut their checks too. They they still trying to cash their checks too. So with that being said, um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Uh, and I think it'd, it'd be a little cool move. But how how much of a step has he lost? And do we need somebody that lost a step in the secondary? Well, he lost a step as a corner. But well, as a free safety, you get to see the whole field. And again, yeah, like you said, he does have that knowledge. So, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be mad if they did that. The next question on this episode of Question from Subscribers came from my boy Aiden. He said, hey, how's it going, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing good. Why are people sleeping on Alejandro like he's a bad dude? Yes, he's older, but he still does well in run blocking. He made a good point at the presser. On a pass-heavy offense with the Steelers, it takes a lot of stress on your body over the course of the game. Pass rushers can get a rhythm on you if you're passing 12 times in a row. And someone like Miles Garrett is lining up against you, and he has 50 to 60 snaps to attack every single angle of your body and try different moves. For a lineman, it takes some strain off of you if you incorporate the run and it gives them time to recover. So my question is this. There's some good points. Uh, with our run-heavy offense, can Villanueva or Villanueva, shout out to my guy, uh, but can he, my guy Augusto, he said, can he do more than just fine? I think so. Sorry for the long question. Just something that not many people are talking about. And I'll, yeah, definitely, for sure. Because again, he, he'll be in a run heavy offense. And that's a lineman's dream. Like, uh, and I know my guy Cam Neal, I know he, he, will, he will always point it out that it's, it's a much better feeling when you go into attack rather than you got to sit back and wait to be attacked. Because as a lineman, if, if you run blocking, Oh, you going going to go chase them defensive linemen, and you go looking to go find somebody to knock out. But if you pass blocking, which I mean, linemen obviously have to do both. But if you just pass blocking, you pass blocking over and over and over. You gotta wait, and you're protecting your quarterback, but you gotta wait for them to come to you. So it just it it, it makes it a lot not necessarily an easier situation, but a better situation for the linemen uh, with the variety. The the variety certainly helps. Um, but with if you just strictly pass and pass and pass and like you did mention that he mentioned, that is some very, very good points that I didn't even think about. How you said he uh the, the pass rusher, they can find different ways to line up against you and, and they can attack every single angle of your body. So they can try to go high on you, they can try to go with a bull rush, they can go with the little swim move, they could try different stuff and they could be trying all these different maneuvers and techniques and whatnot, and they getting their practicing against you because y'all ain't doing nothing but passing. So it definitely helps to uh, have a, a good balance of both. 
Next question came from my boy Ronald. He said, hey, Engraven, quick question. With the Ravens not drafting a tight end, do you think they'll run a two tight end setup like last year to force Lamar to target receivers? Or is this due to the faith that they have in Jacob Breeland for the new tight end they traded for? Or, or the new tight end they traded for? Hope this year so far going well. Keep going with the content. Appreciate that. Um, I, I, I certainly think they'll run with three tight ends, but I, I think that just they, I, I think it's a lack of faith in that third tight end. So they're trying to find who that third tight end is going to be. Ravens have like eight tight ends on the roster right now. They got a lot, man. They have uh, Mark Andrews, Nick Boyle. Those two are obviously locks. But after that, it's up in the air. Because they have Josh Oliver, who they traded for from the Jaguars. They have Jacob Breeland, who was hurt last year and is still hurt right now. They have Wolf um, from last year. They signed Eric Tomlinson. Uh, so that's six. Uh, they got uh, Tony, uh, I want to say Paulson, the undrafted rookie free agent. And, oh, and they drafted Ben Mason. He's a fullback slash tight end. So they have eight. They literally have eight tight ends on the roster right now. So they got some <laughs> decisions to make. Next question came from Mateo. He said, after looking back to when Dak Prescott had that severe injury, I realized he got nothing but love and respect after it. I tried to think what type of response from the media Lamar would get if he had the same injury, and I don't think it would be the same, especially if it happened on a running play. So the question is, do you think Lamar would get the same treatment that Dak got if he had the same injury and if the media would likely blame it on him being a mobile quarterback? Uh, and say much love and keep up the amazing Ravens content. Appreciate that, Mateo. Oh, you already know the answer to this question. You you already know that's a that's a definite no. That's a definite no. Because even if it happened on a play where he was not running, the media would still divert it and be like, oh, even though he was standing in the pocket, no, the reason why it happened is because he runs so much. Straight up. You already know how that would go. It wouldn't be any shocker either. It would be frustrating, but it wouldn't be surprising whatsoever because they would find a way to blame it on that, even though that wasn't even the cause for it. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers came from my boy Antoine. He said, hey, Graven, how are you, my brother? My name is Antoine. been following the channel, and I love what you're doing for our purple and black. I appreciate you, man. He said, be more in the building. Now, to my question, do you think, with the offense and the defense, we can see the same impact that the Legion of Boom had uh, with the Seattle Seahawks. If we improve our play calling this upcoming season, do you think we can take that approach with our offense and defense and let me know what you think? Um, no, not at all. Because that defense was absolutely locked down like nothing was getting past them. They were just, they were killing it. And Ravens defense is good, but... As we continue to go on more and more and more into this era of football, playing defense is just that much harder. Every single year it becomes that much harder. The rules continue to benefit the offense. This is another reason why Ravens, they need to up this offense because they need to take advantage of the era that we're in. So, but the penalties benefit the offense. The rules benefit the offense. The, everything benefits the offense, man. Everything. Um, so I don't really see anybody really be in that legion of boom type of uh defense at all um because the legion of boom they had a strong run game uh with seattle seahawks which the ravens obviously have uh, but their defense was even stronger than their run game was their defense was everything man and i just i don't see that for this team right now not that that that's a bad thing that not and not that i think the defense is going to be bad because you know ravens gonna take care of defense you know the defense is gonna be straight um but i just don't see them as this Absolute lockdown defense. Now, they got a secondary for it now. Uh, and that linebacker, they got smarts. They got speed. They, they got the lightning and the thunder. They got all that. Now, pass rush, that's a little bit questionable right now. It's still there's some question marks there. But we'll see how it all ends up. But as far as Legion of Boom status, no, nah, I don't see it.